Right. Good afternoon and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Lee Doubleday and I'm the Director of Operations here at the Imagine America Foundation. And I'm excited about today's career topic, which is training pilots and technicians sponsored by Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology. Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology is this country's leading provider of high quality aviation technology-based programs at four locations. Nationally accredited by ACCSC, Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology operates in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Broomfield, Colorado, Inglewood, California, and Riverside, California. Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology is also a new partner of the Imagine America Foundation Scholarship and Award Programs. So if you would like to learn more about how your students can apply for one of our scholarships to attend this institution that we're talking about today, please visit our website, which is www.imagine-america.org. And I will also be forwarding you a PDF flyer on how your students can go about applying for a scholarship to this school, likely tomorrow morning with the recording of this presentation. But since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified workers. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation, again, is Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology, and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming worker shortage and how Spartan is helping meet this need is Glenn Tompkins. But before turning the program over to Glenn, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can and are encouraged to submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A or the chat feature inside of this Zoom meeting. And at the end of the presentation, I'll then present any questions offered by the participants. We'll address as many as possible and provide written responses in follow-up emails if necessary. But we will have a hard close at 2.30 p.m., to be respectful of your time. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Glenn. Glenn, the floor is yours. Perfect, thank you, Lee. And I appreciate you uh, having us here, or having me here today, as well as I wanna thank the Imagine America Foundation for y'all's ongoing you know, organization of these webinars and the opportunity to actually speak and get the Spartan uh, program out there in front of the faces of these counselors, as well as their students. I think it's a great opportunity, as you mentioned, with the shortage of, you know, cert certificated uh, students that are getting out in the workforce, specifically in this aviation realm. And, and I think today's call is going to help start to bridge that gap, along with some of the other things that you guys have going on in the way of scholarships. So again, thank you, Lee, for having me. Uh, guys, I'm excited to be here today. I think what we have going on in the aviation space is, is a great opportunity for your students, our future, uh, pilots and, and mechanics to get them really uh, exposed to what's happening in aviation, as well as getting them exposed to an opportunity that they can actually attack versus non-traditional school. They can actually get into a program like this that, where they still feel proud of what they do. It's noble work, being a pilot, being a mechanic. Those are noble jobs. And so I want to give you guys an opportunity to hear more about that today. And I'm looking forward to speaking with a lot of y'all after this. So with that being said, I'm gonna jump right in uh, for the sake of time and start talking through this. Again, my name is Glenn Tompkins. I am the Vice President of Education Partnerships here at Spartan College. I work directly with uh, uh, students, institutions, schools, all around the nation for that matter, and talking to them specifically about what we do here at Spartan College. Uh, as we go through today, let me see if I can get this slide to work. Our session and our agenda is pretty simple. We're gonna talk specifically about the aviation industry. I'm gonna then transition from there and talk specifically about Spartan College and the programs that we offer here. And then I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit about our student services and how we assist our students from the time of enrollment through the time of graduation and then into employment, into a career path. And then above all else, if you guys have questions, we're gonna try to spend a few minutes in answering those questions towards the uh, end of our, our presentation today. So let's keep this moving. Uh, real quick, I just wanna talk about, so, so the aviation industry as a whole, guys, there's a variety of opportunities within the aviation industry as we, uh, as we stand here today. Um, when you really think beyond just commercial aviation, 
you can find opportunities for our students or for futures uh, in careers in corporate, corporate aircraft, private jets, the aerospace industry, uh, even helicopters that are doing some of the oil uh, land management. There's, there's just a ton of different opportunities out there for our students. I mean, even, even things in the way of cargo, shipping, packaging, and then there's general aviation. Uh, where you're looking at maybe a flight attendant, ramp agent, again, just a number of different opportunities that are out there uh, for our students. One of the big uh, sectors right now in aviation that's really hiring students uh, through, through you know, a ton of just bringing them in is uh, the maintenance, repair, and overhaul, overhaul. You might hear me say MROs. It's, again, maintenance, repair, and overhaul haul stations that that are actually contracted with the different airlines out there that are just bringing in a ton of employees and a ton of opportunities for students uh, to get a career path. Uh, but beyond that, if you take a look and kind of look at the list, this document here, this slide here states just in depth and an in depth listing of aviation opportunities, uh, some with it that, that are in need of, of, of secondary education and some that are not. But I wanted to share this slide so you guys can just see there's a, a plethora of, of opportunities within the aviation space that students could take advantage of and that there's career paths for them. And I'm not just talking about, you know, uh, a quick, a, a short opportunity to get some quick work. These are some careers that are going to be lifelong careers for some of these folks. So, I, you know, I, I like to share this slide for you guys to actually see the opportunity that's there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... Let's actually get into it more and more and more depth. So in my mind, and again, I shared this with Lee earlier, I think that this is probably one of the most important slides that I could share with you all today. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys on this line have actually heard of Boeing. They're a well-known name in the aviation space. Uh, a, uh, I'm sorry, Boeing actually created and did a forecast. And the study by Boeing, they, what, they for, what they're forecasting is that over the next 19 years, there's going to be 130,000 commercial pilots hired here in North America alone. There's going to be an additional 137, or I'm sorry, 132,000 technicians that are going to be hired in North America alone. I say all that just simply to say, guys, there's a ton of opportunity there. There's a ton of jobs, ton of career paths. So you're not going to have students that are going through a training program like a Spartan college, not having a, a place to land when it's all said and done right really this big this big opportunity is actually due to a a what i would call the baby the baby boomer generation is contributed to them and those folks that are now retiring out of industry both as pilots and as technicians they're basically leaving the job force right they're retiring they're moving on but as such it's leaving a huge gap uh in, in the employment demand in these areas or in these fields so there's opportunity there when these students are coming out of a program or in a training program like ours here at Spartan. <clears throat> so what is it that the students do once they arrive and once they get here at Spartan College? So it's pretty simple, okay? We offer a couple of programs uh, in the way of aviation maintenance technicians. Uh, aviation maintenance technicians and pilots is what specifically I'm going to talk about today. But an aviation maintenance technician is just simply, guys, a fancy word for saying an airplane mechanic. Okay, so airplane mechanics or air aviation maintenance technicians are going to do general aviation. They're going to also do things like uh, what we call uh, the airframe, which is the body of the plane, or they're going to be looking at the power plant, which is the engine of the plane. And then I like to say soup to nuts, uh, nose to tail, wingtip to wingtip. Students um, that, that venture into this career path we're go are going to be doing it all. So think about things like diagnosing a plane, okay? doing ex inspection and reviews of the plane, right? Their job is to ensure that these planes are airworthy before they can go back up or getting them airworthy to get them back on the line. It's pretty much that simple, right? It's a great opportunity for kids that are very hands-on. They like working uh, on, you know, with their hands or wrenching and using tools. I, have, I get a lot of students that are very interested um, and with a background in working on cars or mechanicing and tearing down engines and doing things of that nature. Those are the types of kids that we want to try to steer this way uh, to, to get them going in this path. On the other hand, when you look at the pilots, beyond just flying an airplane, right, being in control of the plane, which is obviously the most important piece, there's also the huge portion that they're going to learn on a day-to-day -day basis or in their jobs where they're going to have to understand how to do two-way communication, right, how to read systems of navigation, right, operating and controlling the plane, as we already spoke about, 
and then you know going through uh, uh, flight plans and understanding how to submit flight plans, how to uh, how to review um, uh, maintenance procedures and operations that take place on a plane. So these are all things again, not everything that they're going to do, but just some of the duties that you're going to see some of the pilots and some of the maintenance workers that they're going to embark on in this career path. Now, how does Spartan tie into all of this? Right? There's two programs that we offer essentially when it's all said and done. Spartan is going to offer students a chance to, uh, our, let me say it this way, we do two things. We train pilots and we train mechanics. So when a student finishes our program, guys, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to either be flying the plane or they're going to be fixing the plane. All right. And so as I, as I go through the, the next few slides here, I just really want to share with you guys who we are and what we do. So uh, as Lee mentioned, Spartan's been around for a long time. In fact, we've almost been around for 100 years, 94 years to be exact. We've trained over a thousand uh, pilots and maintenance workers in the aviation field over our time frame across the United States and across the world. Now, guys, I don't say that to brag or to to impress you. I really say I'm more to impress upon you the fact that we've been around for a long time and we know what we're doing and we do it at a high level. OK, so we really stand behind three pillars. We work from a practical perspective where we do hands on training and learning to help these students to understand how to operate planes and how to maintain planes. We utilize te technology in everything that we do, whether it be the maintenance program or our pilot programs. And then we focus 100% around safety. Everything that we operate and do guys is FAA approved. And so we have to make sure that all of our codes and our processes are up to key and that we are utilizing safety at the forefront of it all. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So in talking specifically about our campuses and where we're located, Lee mentioned that we're actually in four different, uh, or we have four different locations right now, Inglewood in, in Los Angeles, California area. We also have Riverside, California, Broomfield, Colorado, and, uh, and our campus out in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now specifically today, I'm gonna speak to you guys about our maintenance program, programs that are in California, as well as our flight program uh, that's in Tulsa. I'm going to give you full detail of that, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to a, a flight program that we're going to be uh, bringing up in our Broomfield, uh, Colorado campus. But starting for starters here, Inglewood. Our Inglewood campus actually houses two programs right now. The first program is going to be our Associates of Occupational Studies in Aviation Maintenance Technology. It's a 22-month program that encompasses students having the ability to get their airframe and power plant diploma which is going to allow the students to be able to sit for the FAA AMP certification exam. All right, and I know that's a mouthful, and I can ask, answer those questions in more detail if you guys have it, but essentially what happens is when a student comes to us, they're going to get trained to be able to be uh, prepared and pass the AMP certification to become a certified AMP mechanic. All right, for those students that simply want that and only that, it's an 18-month program at Spartan College at our Inglewood campus. Now that's gonna be a Monday through Friday, six hours a day, they would be in class for 18 months. For those students that finish that program and decide I actually wanna have some type of a degree on my resume and essentially wanna try to build and try and transition into a lead position or maybe even a managerial role, they can actually add an additional four months to their program, making it a total of 22 months in earning an associate's degree. All right, and again, I'll give you guys kind of more detail as we maybe spend some time one-on-one -on -one together to give you more of the nuts and bolts, but essentially the associates program, as I mentioned, is a 22 month program. It's the diploma program of 18 months with an additional four months to complete the associates component. And then, as I mentioned before, the AMP or the airframe and power plant diploma program is 18 months, Monday through Friday is consistently six hours. So the students will get breaks throughout their time here but we really get the students in, we get them graduated, we get them certified and we get them employed, all right? So that's our LA and our Inglewood campus. When we talk about the Riverside location, or you guys might even hear me say the IE or Inland Empire campus, that program in and of, its, of, a, of itself is a diploma program that can, that's gonna uh, take 15 months. Now, what you don't see here is the associates component. The associate's degree cannot be completed at our Riverside location because Riverside is not our home campus or what I would say is our main campus. The main campus is the LA campus. Riverside operates under 
our LA campus uh, you know, under the umbrella of our LA campus. So the actual associate's degree component is only offered at the, uh, the, the LA campus. So here's what happens. A student comes to Riverside, they wanna complete their aviation maintenance technology. It's the same thing as an AMP, exact same thing. It's 15 months, it's gonna be Monday through Friday, just like the LA campus. The difference is here in Riverside, those students are gonna be in class for eight hours as opposed to six, which is why their program is three months shorter or quicker, if I, if that's, if I said that correctly, all right? So again, they'll complete their program in 15 months versus 18 months, but these students still will have the option of then transferring over to our LA campus to complete an additional four months to get the associate's degree attached. The only thing or the only difference is they can't do the entire program at the Riverside location where it's gonna encompass both the diploma and the associate's degree. Okay, I hope I made that clear. Now, aviation maintenance technology, again, if you guys hear me say aviation maintenance technology, or if you hear me say AMP certification, guys, I am speaking the same language. It's just two ways of saying the exact same thing. That program, again, is 15 months. So for, for those that have students that are interested in a maintenance career, right, the mechanicing side of it, these are the programs that they're going to be looking at here in LA or at the Riverside location. Aviation maintenance technician or AMP technician, same thing. For those students that are interested in a flight path, our current flight program, our aviation flight program is offered at our Tulsa, Oklahoma campus. Now, you guys see here that it says train to become a professional pilot in as few as 17 months. That's the quickest amount of time that a student is going to get it done. And I say that because it doesn't always take 17 months because it's going to be based on how available your students are or our students are able to get out there and fly, right? If they're only flying once a week, it's going to take them a lot longer than the student that's eligible or able to get out in the in, up in the sky five times a week. So in this program, however, the students will go through from ab initio, meaning from start to certified flight instructor. They have no, no experience up to certified flight instructor. 17 month program and i'll give you guys there's going to be six different milestones that we're going to go through for your students or for the students in order for them to become a flight instructor all right it's going to start off with what we call a ppl or private pilot airplane single engine and that's the easiest certification for for a uh, the easiest and the quickest certification for a student to receive and become a private pilot typically a, pi a private pilot is going to be one that uh, flies their own plane, they may own a plane or have a friend or someone that they know that has a plane, they at this point are not eligible or able to fly at night and they're not eligible to fly or transport people for money, okay? The instrument rating then gives them the ability to actually fly at night once they get that. Then they'll move on to both a uh, commercial pilot certificate, single engine and multi-engine which then will allow them to, as, as commercial pilots, will allow them to transport individuals and charge for it, okay? Then once they get to this, the, the component of a certified flight instructor, that milestone will have them as a, what we call a CFI, and they'll get their CFI certificate, and then they'll get their CFII, which is just adding instrument, which means they can use the radio, uh, radio technology and those things in order to, um, to fly and, and, and to transport students. Now, the certified flight instructor, when you guys get to that point or to that spot, a student will have roughly earned about 245 credits with us. I'm sorry, 245 flight hours with us. And they'll also earn their associate's degree at that point. Okay, that's that 17 months that we were just talking about. The holdup that I'm going to share with you guys right now so you know is when a student gets to this point to that certified flight instructor role or that milestone, they tend to what I would say is if there's an opportunity or there's the, the likelihood that they phase out. And when I say phase out, they don't move forward all the time here with their pursuit of becoming a, um, a, 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 a aviation transport pilot. In other words, they're not in a spot where they can move forward and become a pilot for say Delta or American or any of the majors out there because they have to complete 1500 hours total, okay? In order for you to fly, for one of the major airlines, you have to complete 1500 hours. But because Spartan College, we have what's called a restricted ATP, because we offer the associate's degree, a student only have, they only have to complete 1250 hours. It still becomes a problem for the students because 
as you guys probably know, in order for them to fly, they have to pay. Okay. They, in order for them to get a certified flight instructor and to take them out and get the flight hours that they need, they have to have their own plane or they have to pay someone to take them up in the plane and let them utilize the plane to get the time. So a lot of the students burn out here. What our students and what our program and what we're doing now for our students, when they hit the, the milestone of certified flight instructor, what we're going to do for them is we're actually going to hire them on with Spartan College as certified flight instructors. And so now what they're going to do is they're going to take all of these individuals from private, from instrument, from commercial, from everything before certified flight instructor, they're going to actually start taking those students out and doing their flight time with them. So what happens now is they are they become an instructor for us and we pay them to actually get their flight hours up to the 1500 mark or the 1250 mark, whatever it is that they're pursuing. So I hope that makes sense. And I was able to kind of nail that down for y'all. We do that, though, because we want to see these students obtain and reach their goals with still having minimal costs associated to their to their program. All right. So, again, I know that's a mouthful and I know it's a lot and you probably have questions and we'll entertain those questions here at the end. But but that's just kind of it in a nutshell, summarizing what we do on our flight program here for Spartan College. Some of the other benefits that we offer and that you guys should know that, we, again, we are an FAA approved school. Both of my California campuses are, are FAA approved uh, with the Part 147 on it. The Oklahoma campus has not only the Part 147 for the tech side, but it also has the Part 141 for the flight component of our program. So again, we are approved by FAA. And really, guys, our difference is this. We are a Title IV funded school, meaning we offer financial aid to those students who qualify. Uh, we offer career placement. We are actually rated and graded on the amount of students that we place in field in the aviation career path upon, upon completion of our program. So it's not graduate, good luck, handshake. It's graduate, now let me go to work for you and help you find a job with one of our employer partners. And I can tell you guys, we have an extensive list of employee partners that I'm going to share with you here shortly. Uh, and again, I love the fact that we are just uh, a hands-on, very much influenced by safety around our, our, our uh, hangars and at our campuses. It's really what we hang our hat on, but we really uh, put students out in the marketplace that are prepared and ready for this career path. Now, <clears throat> some of the things that you guys should be aware of, I mentioned our career services. Not only do we offer career services at the end of the program, we're offering career service the entire time that they're in our program. Things like resume writing workshops, uh, interview skills. Uh, we, we help them build their social media uh, platform so they can understand that they're putting out, you know, their, their social medias uh, are being looked at by employers when it comes to hiring them. We do those things the entire time that they're on our program to help build a well-rounded student when they leave us, okay? Now, we have partnerships and I want you guys to be aware that you see two partnerships and I want you to be very clear. These are not the only two partners that we have, but these are two that we specifically work with around a cadet academy. So American Airlines has recently, recently come on board with us. And what they're doing is they are actually having their candidates that they have received that are looking at becoming pilots. They're sending those pilots to us through their cadet academy or through our cadet academy where we're gonna train uh their their pilots up get them trained up get their flight time and then we're going to send them back to american airlines to start their career path okay we do the exact same thing with skywest but the difference between skywest and american is that skywest is doing that same program both for technicians and for pilot so those mechanics and those pilots have an opportunity of being employed with skywest and having kind of the uh, the reassurance that they already have a career or a job lined up before they even graduate out of our program. So it's a huge kind of assurance to them, letting them know you have a, a great career opportunity when you leave us. So SkyWest, we're really proud on that partnership simply because SkyWest is gonna offer also some tuition assistance to the students as they reach certain milestones in their program with us. So as they get to a certain point, SkyWest is gonna release funds to them to help pay for school. When they reach another point, they're gonna release more funds to that student all the way up and until offering funding towards them to help with their final certifications to become a certified AMP mechanic and or pilot, okay? So just a lot going on. And I also would like to share because it's not listed here is that we've recently uh, also signed a very huge uh, cadet academy program with Allegiant Airlines, which is gonna get started uh, January 1 of 2023. 
And within that program in and of itself, the students will be able to come into the program. It's gonna be offered at, at our Broomfield campus uh, at an airport called McAir Airport uh, out of Colorado. So the students will be able to go through that program, same situation, they'll go through the program, they're gonna get their pilot training, they're gonna get leadership training, they're gonna then transition over to Allegiant and already have a career path in place. The one caveat to all of these is that there's gonna be a certain time commitment um, or employment commitment that each student or cadet or employee is gonna have to offer to each of these employers a minimum of two years commitment to them, which in my mind, guys, is nothing when you think about the benefits that they're gonna receive, guaranteed jobs, in some cases, tuition assistance, and in other cases, uh, uh, loan forgiveness programs that the employers are offering. So again, we could talk about that more in detail in a one-on-one -on -one environment once we get that opportunity, okay? And then finally, I already mentioned you guys that we do offer financial aid for those who qualify. Um, we all, you know, we, we look for those students that are, that are in need uh, to try to make sure that they maximize on grant opportunities or scholarship opportunities, uh, very similar to what you guys are hearing from Lee and what he's doing uh, with their program here, there's a lot of opportunities for students to get funding and it's a need when it comes down to it. And then finally, guys, our admissions process is very simple, okay? We are gonna walk the students from start to finish up until sitting them in their, in their class on the first day of class to ensure that, that the road isn't very bumpy for them, right? We're gonna walk them through the admissions process. We're gonna walk them through the financial aid process. They'll have an admissions representative and they'll have a financial aid representative uh, throughout their time at Spartan College. <clears throat> and with that said, I wanna thank you guys for giving me an opportunity uh, sitting here and listening to me today. What I would love to do is to hear from you guys. Uh, I know you guys can touch back with Lee. He'll come over the top of this right now and make sure that you guys understand how to get in contact with me. But with that said, thank y'all for your time. I'm really looking forward to working with you in the near future. All right, thank you. Yeah, we are now gonna open this up for the Q&A portion of our presentation. So if you have a question for either myself or Glenn, please type it in the chat feature or the uh, Q&A feature of the Zoom meeting. Um, Glenn, first question, this person wants to know, uh, do you know what percentage of your student body are female? Great question. So on the maintenance side, right now it's less than 15%, but it does vary by campus. So I could say like at our LA campus, there are upwards of like 25 to 30 percent, but at the IE campus, a little bit lower. And the only reason it's lower at the IE, I'm sorry, at the Riverside campus, I got to quit using IE <laughs> at the Riverside campus is because we just had about six female students graduate. But what I can tell you guys is that 97 percent of the time, and that's an actual fact and percentage, 97 percent of the time, our female students are ranking at the top of their graduating classes and they're getting hired almost immediately on day one because there's a huge demand to diversify uh, the working maintenance class with females. That's From the pilot side, guys, I can't give you that number because I don't know it to be honest with you, but I do know that we have a ton of women um, that are you know, becoming pilots as well. Awesome, okay. Um, so we talked about accreditation a little bit. You are nationally accredited by ACCSC, correct? That is correct by ACCSC. And then in California, just so we're clear, we're actually accredited by the Council on Occupational Education or the COE. And right. that's okay. Yeah, this but, is, yeah, but have... both uh, accredited by national accrediting body and you're also uh, qualified for Title IV funding. So students can apply for a FAFSA to go to your school, right? That is correct. That is correct. Um, and your Oklahoma campus mm -hmm. uh, is where the uh, the pilot training is. And you offer housing at that campus as well, right? Yes, we do. That's a great question. Yeah, we do offer housing at our at our uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma flight program uh, uh, facility as well. Yes. Fantastic. All right. I think that does it for our questions. Um, just a few house cleaning items here. Number one, we have recorded this session and I'll be sending it to you likely tomorrow morning. Number two, there is a follow-up survey when you leave this meeting. It's only four questions long and is multiple choice, um, but any feedback you could give us would be greatly, greatly appreciated. We do presentations like this across the United States. So if you're taking something away from this presentation you really liked, please let us know. Or if there's something that maybe you wish we had covered but didn't, please let us know that as well. 
Um, before closing, I just want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And I'd also like to thank Glenn for sharing with us today's presentation. I will encourage you to contact him directly with any future questions you may have. And I will be sending his contact information out to you tomorrow with the recording of this presentation. So if you'd like somebody to come out and talk to your students, either in person or doing it virtually, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to Glenn and let him know so that he can get somebody uh, to come out to your school. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Glenn and myself, I want to wish you a great rest of your day and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.